when any Christian, when any person that is seeking the true divine God, when they look around what is happening in the world and around them, they keep on wondering what is going on. There is something mysterious. I can see evil is being infiltrated everywhere. I can see evil is being so rapidly increasing at a global pace, at a global level, so fast. I'm not catching up with the, with the new changes that are happening in an evil way. I'm not catching up. I need to be updated every second nowadays. I see people walking away from God more and more. Atheism infiltrated the world. So many countries, once upon a time, they were built on Christian values. Nowadays, they are in total denial of their own Messiah. Europe, Canada, America, Australia, the Western world more so, who were Christians, friends. My goodness. I was going to mention another country, but I'll... I'll keep my peace. <laughs> what is happening? So when I wonder and I look around and I see all this evil happening, then as a believer in the true divine God, the question arises within me, God, where are you? Can you explain please? To me, this is a mystery. How come you're not doing anything? How come you are not stopping all this evil, yet you are so capable of achieving such a thing? You can stop it before I blink my eyes, yet you're letting go. And this is exactly, not just us as lay people, as simple people, as weak people, even the prophets of the Old Testament question this mystery. I'm going to give you a biblical reference from the book of Jeremiah chapter 12 verses 1 to 2 Jeremiah 12 1 to 2 he is asking exactly the same question there's something mysterious happening around me I Jeremiah in relation to God look at this Jeremiah 12 1 to 2 righteous are you O Lord he is actually engaging in a dialect with God himself Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Meaning, you are too good to be true. Who am I to question your wisdom, your authority, your sovereignty? Who am I? But at the end, at the same time, don't be angry with me, God, when I'm questioning, where are you? <laughs> because evil is surrounding me, Lord. What are you waiting for? Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me talk. Look at this. Please forgive me first, but please let me talk and don't be offended or angry with me. Yet let me talk with you about your judgments. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? I'm asking you, Lord. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? Those who do evil, how come they are happy? And those who are trying to do good, how come they are so miserable? You have planted them. You've planted them. Those who do evil, you planted them. They are, you created them. They are yours. Can you stop them? You have planted them. Yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. You're so close to them, but so distant from them in their mind, because their mind is thinking evil, and you are the good God. But I, Jeremiah, the prophet of the Lord, I'm asking, why do people who do bad prosper, and those who are trying their hardest to do good they keep on falling, falling, falling. And the people who are seeking God are becoming less and less. And those who are seeking Satan are increasing so rapidly every single day. 
Where are you, God? How come God is keeping silent and allowing evil to increase so quickly and so fast? Why isn't he interfering and stopping it? It's a mystery. You know why? One reason God is not interfering so fast because of his beloved bride, the church. I'll give you a simple analogy. Imagine there is this king in this particular country. And in that particular country where he reigns over as a king, has a person that he loves. He's got a bride. He's got a girl that he loves and adores the most. And he's betrothed to this girl. And he wants to marry her later on. This girl is living in that very country where he resides there as a king. The people of that country are evildoers. They're doing everything that is offensive to the king and against his sovereign authority. If it was up to him, he would have wiped that country from the face of this earth because of the evilness of those people in that country. The only thing that is stopping him from wiping that country is his sweetheart. For as long as she is living in that country, he can't burn it. Because if he burns it, he's going to kill the love of his life. He's waiting for the day he takes her home. And the day that comes, he takes her home. You can kiss goodbye this world. This king is Christ. The bride is the church, and the church is living in this world. He put it in this world, and he was betrothed to the church while she's in this world. But the people of the world are doing everything evil in the sight of this king. And he's so angry, and he's about to strike this world and wipe it from existence. But the only thing that he's not interfering so quickly where we started questioning God, where are you? Because he's saying, the only reason I'm so patient with this evil world, because I have the love of my life still in the world. I cannot strike it, because how can I strike it and kill the one I died for? Didn't I die for the church on the cross? I am waiting for the day to take my bride home. Believe you me, when that day comes, the world will know how awesome Jesus Christ of Nazareth is. Your Satan, whom you have made your God, will be shivering and trembling just because I blinked my eye. He will be running away like a mouse when he faces the Lion of Judah. He will become a mouse. Today, he is revealing himself as the Roaring Lion. Look at Satan, powerful. Where is your Jesus? So weak. You guys who claim that you believe in the true God, look how weak you are. We're doing whatever we want to do and bring your way and we are making fun of you guys you can't do nothing you see your god is weak compared to our god so we'll put poison in your food we'll put poison in your life we'll destroy your way of thinking we will make sure that we'll take you away from your true god and we are gonna enslave you to our new way of life, the new norm. A schwabby boy. There will never be a new norm because there will always be this true divine God who art in heaven. So wake up before it's too late and the likes of you before it's too late. 
Focus on Christ, not on people, because the people of the 21st century have definitely lost a plot. They are not interested in God. And when I say God, I mean Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because you need to specify. There's only one God. And definitely Krishna is not. Definitely Buddha is not. Definitely Islam is not. Definitely all of them are not. There's only one. And it's not the Christians. It is the Christ. This is God. Christians can be bad people sometimes and do not reflect Jesus Christ, the real Jesus in their life. But Christ never changes. We're weak. He's not. We're sinners. He's holy of holies. We can be dark, but he is the light of the world. We lie. He is the truth, never changing. This is Christ. And he is the God who created everyone and everything visible and invisible he was revealed in the flesh was crucified died in the flesh on the cross was buried and rose from the dead on the third day went up and sat at the right hand of the father this is the love of my life please drop in your comments and questions please like and subscribe listen my sons my daughters Listen up. The world is swimming in evilness. The lies are now so cheap. You can get them from a, two do a dollar shop, not a two dollar shop, a dollar shop. Lies are there for you to grab in every corner you turn. In every alley you walk, in every direction you face, lies are everywhere. Lies are everywhere. I beg of you, I beg of you, I beg of you. Remind yourselves you belong to Christ, not to your friends. Not to having fun, not to going out and imitating other people of this world. I beg you, my daughter, I love you to death, but Jesus loves you the most. You are beautiful as you are. You don't need to change nothing in you. Only one thing you need to change, your heart. Give your heart to Christ. This is the only place you need to focus on. Don't look at your facial looks. You're beautiful. I don't care. You're fat. You're thin. You're tall. You're short. You've got big ears, small ears, big nose, small nose. Who cares? Who cares? Let people make fun of me. Let people talk behind my back and say the, he is this and she is that. Who gives one penny? As long as Jesus says, you're my daughter and you're my son. That's what matters. Focus on Christ, not on people, because the people of the 21st century have definitely lost a plot. They are not interested in God. And when I say God, I mean Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because you need to specify there's only one God and definitely Krishna is not definitely Buddha is not definitely Islam is not definitely all of them are not there's only one and it's not the Christians it is the Christ this is God Christians can be bad people sometimes and do not reflect Jesus Christ the real Jesus in their life but Christ never changes we're weak, he's not. We're sinners, he's holy of holies. We can be dark, but he is the light of the world. We lie, he is the truth, never changing. This is Christ. And he is the God who created everyone and everything, visible and invisible. 
He was revealed in the flesh, was crucified, died in the flesh on the cross, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day, went up and sat at the right hand of the Father. This is the love of my life. So professors, with all love and respect, get a life. Sons and daughters, turn your room into a church, not a place where you hang some Hollywood celebrities on the walls of your rooms. Burn them. I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about those nonsense pictures. We need to pray for everyone. You need to love everyone. And you need to ask the Lord to touch the hearts of everyone. If you have M&M on the, on, the, on the wall of your room, I thought it was chocolate. Turned out to be a wrapper. Yeah, well, M&Ms, aren't they chocolate? I mean, with all love and respect to Eminem, the, the person, I don't mean anything wrong. But hey, why are you putting a rapper's picture on there? You need to purify your thoughts. Until when are we going to live in, 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 in very defiled thinking? Turn your homes into a church. Turn your homes into a church. Turn your homes into a church. My son, when are you going to learn to bend those knees and let him touch the ground in worship of your Christ, the King? When? How come you bend them for the world, for evil things, for ugly things, for foolish things, for dirty and filthy things? You're bending those knees, but you don't want to bend them for the Holy of Holies. The God who created you, who loved you the most and died for you and rose from the dead for you. You don't want to bend those knees, but you're bending them for drugs, alcohol, gambling, women, women, men, evil, evil, evil. Purify. This temple, purified. If there is anyone at uni, studying at uni or even high school, where this so-called professor comes along and gives a lecture and speaks ignorantly and so foolishly, and tries to brainwash all these young men and women at uni levels through his or her profession, being boastful about their PhD in, sci in, their, in their scientific field, whatever it may be, and to come and try to convince you with their education and with their PhDs and say to you, there is no God, don't ever listen to such nonsense. They have been planted deliberately in the educational system. It has been infiltrated by evil deeds and doers to brainwash people away from the true divine God. Because Satan, I can assure you, Satan knows very well who Jesus Christ of Nazareth is. He knows very well. He knows very well. Because he came to this realization. One crushed his head and put him to shame forever on Calvary, uh, on the cross on Calvary. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and he reigns and lives forever. So Satan is trying frantically to break Jesus' heart by taking his children away from him. Jesus is the truth. There is God and this God is one. And this one God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He came on earth over 2,000 years ago in the land of Israel and born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth of Galilee. 
He did wonders, miracles, signs throughout his ministerial life on earth, which lasted three years and four months. He was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead to say, I am your creator. I live, and whoever has me as Lord and Savior will live in me forever as well. This is the truth. All of us, we ask this, God, where are you? How come you're not coming to my rescue? What are you waiting for? Can't you see I'm suffering? Can't you see I'm struggling? Can't you see my heavy burdens? Can't you see people have gone against me? Everything is going wrong in my life. Can't you see the doors are being shut in my face? Can't you hear my cries, my pleadings? Can't you see the tears gushing down from my eyes? What are you waiting for, Lord? Are you waiting for me to go to the pit? Is that it? Are you going to come when I die? Didn't you say, ask and you shall be given? Seek and you shall find, knock and the door will open. I'm begging you, where are you? No, the Lord will come at the time where he will make sure you will find him. Even if it means you continue a little longer drinking the poison of this world, of Satan. But he will come at a time. Trust in the Lord, my beloved. He will come at a time when he comes at that perfect time then you will realize then and then only that Christ exists let me tell you one thing you can read the Holy Bible for as long as you want and you can become very educated in the Holy Bible please listen you can be very educated, you can read it, you can contemplate on it, you can swim in it. That doesn't mean that you know the Lord. Doesn't mean at all. You see, to discover Christ, literally, I'm talking literally, you see, I'm going to show you. We all suffer. We all suffer from this. We all struggle. Uh, mighty saints struggled with this. Who, who am I? We all say, yes, of course I believe in the Lord. Of course I love Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? Don't ask me this again. Yes, I love him and I'm willing to die for him. And the Lord asks you of one little tiny thing. You just lose it. He'll come and you'll push him away without even realizing or even realizing. Do you know when you will have a real life with Christ? I'm talking about a real encounter with Christ. The real encounter with Christ, all the knowledge you gained about the Holy Bible. You could have gone to uni and studied theology and you received your doctorate in theology. And now you are a theologian and you are a professor in theology and you preach and you, you, you teach at university levels. You teach theology. You become one of the greatest teachers of biblical insights in the world. But you are a total stranger to Jesus Christ still yet. Even if you're a pope, even if you're a cardinal, even if you're a bishop, even if you're a priest, no matter who you are and what you are, you will never, you will never get to know Jesus Christ in the truth until you let him teach you. I just wonder, was Simon Peter, did Simon receive any doctrine in theology? Which university did these fishermen go to? Which schools? 
What is their qualifications? This guy used to throw the net in the sea to catch some fish. Had no idea. But look at the way he writes when you read St. Peter's words in First and Second Peter. Look at St. John, a great theologian, no university. There is no knowledge on the face of this world that can teach you what it is like to hug Jesus Christ. No one. When you hug him, no one can explain this moment. No one. You won't understand it either when you get hugged by the Lord. So what do you need to do? My advice, just embrace it and thank the Lord. Don't try to find out what is this all about. Just enjoy the moment when you're embraced by the Lord. But you see, this discovery of the Lord Jesus, my dear daughter, has to come when we go through some dark tunnels in our life. When we are questioning, there is so much wrong going in my life. There is so much evil happening in the world. My friends have left me. My family misunderstand me. The closest people have deserted me. I tried to do this and I failed. I went in the exam and I came out failed. I wanted to get married and I failed. I tried a job and I failed. And everything is going wrong. And I'm asking God for an answer. Come to my rescue. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Heaven is quiet. But don't ever think Jesus has walked away from you. Don't. He is the closest ever to you. He's the closest. But he will come. Oh yes, he will come. He will definitely come. But at a time he chooses, not you. But when he comes at that time, rest assured, the time that he chooses for you to discover him will be the worst time in your life will be the hardest time in your life will be the most troublesome times in your life when you are absolutely alone that's when jesus is going to show up and at that moment when you come to this truth to this realization there is no one in existence that will come and say there is no god you will laugh you will laugh at such people and such statements because it's stupid it is stupido jesus is the real deal satan knows this but he's laughing at the people of the world why they walked away from the lord Romans 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to, to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My goodness, if you truly focus on this holy saint, the way he is putting these words so eloquently, yes, it is the Holy Spirit, it is the grace of God that has been inspired through uh, you know, and revealed to Saint Paul, but still, still, this man gave his life to Jesus Christ and look how awesome you God Jesus is using him do you see the way he is writing so eloquently so beautifully it is like an orchestra a symphony orchestra playing a classical piece it's a beautiful music the way Saint Paul is talking here amazing present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God 
holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Holy, acceptable to God. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. St. Paul is saying to all of us, I want you to be dead to the world, living for Christ. I want you to be dead to everything that is to do with the world. And I want you to be all alive when it comes to Jesus Christ. Let your ears be shut to what the world say, but all your ears open to what Christ says to you. Be dead to people that take you to the wrong places for the wrong reasons. Be dead to those so-called friends that say, come on, get in the car and we're going to go downtown and we'll have the best time of our lives. We'll do everything wrong under the sun because it is called freedom. So disobey God, offend God, offend this body, this mind, this soul, this spirit, just to please your lusts and your pleasures, who cares about everything else? St. Paul saying, kill your body in order to live in the spirit. Next time your friend calls you and says, let's go to the club, say, no, I'm going to the church. And if you want to come, by all means, I'll come and pick you up. Um, I will not go to the club anymore. I do not belong to Satan. I belong to the one who purchased me with his precious blood, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Sacrifice dead. Be dead to the world, to the people of this world, and be living to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the source of life and the resurrected Messiah who lives forever. Acceptable to God. What is it? Your reasonable service. Reasonable service, reason, is to do with the mind. So here the translation is not accurate 100%. Your intellectual service. That's what reasonable is. Because reasonable comes from the word reason. And reasoning is to do with the mind. So St. Paul is saying, you need to worship God with your mind. So-called friends, they come and they paint it so beautifully before us. It's very tempting. Come on, bro. We're going to have fun today, brother. We're going out. Wait, don't worry. Trust me. You're going to have... Yes. And until the next day... Boom, 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 boom. How do you worship God when you do what He says? Now, and then He continues in verse 2 and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Conformed, don't be like the world. The people of the world lie, don't lie. The people of the world steal, don't steal. The people of the world kill, don't kill. The people of the world love darkness, don't walk and embrace darkness. The people of the world, they do wrong things, don't do wrong things. Do not be conformed, do not imitate the world. And the younger, the genera the, the younger generation, the, the men and the women, the boys and the girls, especially you guys are so influenced by brands and celebrities. Oh my goodness. Beyonce and I don't know, I don't know all the names. I'm too old for this nonsense. One Hollywood singer and one Hollywood celebrity comes out and everybody goes, ah, relax. This is a piece of a human being, a sinner, full of wrong things, evil things. What are you crazy about? Go crazy about Jesus, not this human being that is lost 
in this world. Millions and millions loved Michael Jackson. Where is he? Where are they? They all began in the church, in the choir, singing, praising the Lord. Look where they ended up. This is what happens when you lose track of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can't you see? Can't you think for a moment? Aren't they a living example right before your very eyes? And these people lived in your time. This is not a mythical story. This is real. These people lived and you saw them on TV. And you've probably gone to their concert. Where are they? Even though I pray for all of them. But where are they? Where are they? Don't think I'm talking about them. I love them. I'm praying for them, for the Lord to forgive them and accept them in, the, in His kingdom. But where are they? Look how they started and look how they ended up. So what different are you to them for you to think you can get away with it by doing the wrong things? What makes you think that you can get away with it? No one can because God will make sure no one can. But this God loves you and died for you and he wants you to him. 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 And he will do everything to make sure you come back to him. He will leave you no excuse at the end for you to go at him and say, it's your fault. You should have helped me here. You should have done this for me. He will leave you with no excuse because he will reveal it right before your very eyes. At the end, your life's journey will be played as a movie before your eyes. The Lord will show you millions and millions and upon millions of times he has been there calling you, begging you, knocking at your door pleading, crying, screaming for you, you ignored him. He will show you. He will show you. Come back. Come back to the Lord. Do not be conformed, but rather transformed. Transformation, not confirmation. Not conformity. Now, how do I be transformed, not conformed? He said, by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Now, the word renew is a compounded word, two in one. R-E, pretext, and the word new. So, re, and then new. Put together, renew. Now, re means to go back rewind to go back but the word new is not something new why because everything is of old there is nothing new we as humans when we discovered something we called it this is new but this is new to us only what we've discovered is always been there from ancient times to God everything is of old Nothing is new, but for us it is, not for God. So the word new here, where St. Paul is saying, by the renewing of your mind, by going back to the new, the new here means origin. Renew, go back to your origin. How do I and you be transformed and not conformed? How do we change our way of thinking? St. Paul says, the only way for you to be able to change your way of thinking, go back to your origin, renew. What is our origin? God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Satan is trying so frantically to stop you getting to God. Please open your eyes. Ask the Lord to open your eyes. See, this is exactly what is happening. Oh my goodness, at home, the system, 
the system which governments have put together, it is a anti-family system. Anti-family. A little kid goes to kindergarten, they get brainwashed. If mom and dad say this or that, call triple zero. I'm not saying that there isn't domestic violence at homes, but this should not be forced on every level. Not every parent is an evildoer. There are some great mom and dads that want to teach great values and instill them in their children, but the educational system is destroying it all. Seek God. Do not listen to the world. Seek God. Be strong. Trust in the Lord. Whatever has been happening and is happening in your life, the Lord sees everything. The Lord is aware of everything. The Lord is in control of everything. Trust Him. Be happy. Be strong. Don't give in and don't give up to whatever temptations are coming. And even if you fall, say no matter how many times I fall, the Lord will put me back on my feet. The Lord will put me back on my feet. You know when St. Paul says, we are the church, and the church is the body of Christ, and Christ is the head. Imagine when you're feeling down, when, you, when you're at your lowest moment, you're drowning, you've hit rock bottom, there is no way out of this situation, it's miserable. Satan will come exactly at this time. When you are really losing hope and losing everything, he will come at this time and he'll put every negative thing in your head. Look at you, where is Jesus? But he doesn't tell you it's him. By the way, these kind of thoughts, Satan is an expert. When you hear a voice in your head saying, Jesus doesn't love you anymore, look what he's doing to you, look what's happening, look, you've been begging him. You've been going to church and praying and doing, and look, he is playing with you. He's deserted you. He's let you down. He has failed you. This is Satan, 100%. I know. Trust me. The beard is white, right? I know, it's Satan. You know what you say? You say to Satan, and another advice, don't engage yourself in a conversation with Satan a lot. Don't. Don't give him this opportunity. Don't. He talks to you, you talk to the Lord. Don't talk back to him. Because he'll grab you. I've tried it. <laughs> you talk, he talks to you, you talk to the Lord. He comes and says, then and then and Say, Lord, I love you. Smack him. When you ignore Satan, he boils up. He hates it. So, get on his, on his nerves. Yeah. Why do you want to try to get on my nerves? Man, I'm a weak instrument. What do you want from me? I'm the greatest sinners of all. I'm nothing. So if you've got a problem, talk to my master. Bring the Lord. Don't be Mr. Superman and say, Hey, Satan, come here. I'm going to show you who is the man here. No, no. He'll, he'll make you a football and he'll shoot you everywhere. Believe me, grab the Lord and say, Lord, you talk to him. And then the Lord will go, boo, boo. Yeah, I had a visit the other day. <sighs> Why would I come and yell and lose my voice? If Jesus was not real, why would I waste my time and your time? Do you think this is just a, like a, a duty, an obligation? No. The church is not a duty. 
This kind of gathering is not a duty. It's not an obligation. This is life. I'm here because Christ is my life. Otherwise, no one will see me. I don't give one penny about this or that. This cloth and that chair is beautiful because of Jesus. Otherwise, without Jesus, just a chair. Who gives one penny about the chair? Otherwise, this is just clothes. Anyone can make them and very cheap. You go to Cabramata, very cheap. But what makes these beautiful and precious is this gorgeous man called Jesus of Nazareth. That's why I'm wearing him wherever I go. Thank you for the red belt in karate, Lord Jesus. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. When you're drowning and when your entire body is submerged underwater and Satan comes and makes fun of you and me, says, look at you, you're dead, you're finished. Say, no, as long as the head is above water, I'm alive. Let the whole body be underwater submerged. I'm not dead. I haven't drowned. The head is above water. I can breathe because I can receive oxygen through the head, not the body. That's the source of my life, the head. This is where I receive my breath of life. Well, guess what, Satan? The head of this body is Christ. The church, us, is the body of Christ. Christ is the head. When your head is Christ, where is this head? Went up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father in the Holy of Holies, the ultimate sovereign authority, the Son of God, the Son of Man, equal to God. This is my head. He is in the heaven of all heavens. Satan, can you bring the head of Christ underwater? If you can, then I'm dead. But if you can't, I'm going to step on you in the name of the one who is my head, Christ the King. For as long as he lives, I live. Let the body be persecuted. Let the body go through trouble sometimes. Let the body suffer. But the head is Christ. This is the, my source where I receive the breath of life. I'm not dead. So away with you, Satan. Christ is my oxygen, is my life. My head is in the heaven of all heavens. You can't go any higher than this. You can't be any more glorious than this. This is where Christ has taken us, my beloveds. Love the Lord and enjoy the moment with the Lord. Read the Holy Bible. Make your homes churches or a church. Please, I beg you. If there is any silly photos of people and this and that, rip them apart, shred them, throw them away. Clean the environment, clean the atmosphere, clean the house. Put a place where you kneel. Kneel, let your knees hit the ground and worship Jesus Christ of Nazareth and see what the Lord is going to do for you. God bless you always. The Lord is good. He loves us all. And he cares about us all. So whatever you were thinking of, I pray the Lord has answered you. Love. See God. Do not listen to the world. Seek God. Be strong. Trust in the Lord. Whatever has been happening and is happening in your life, the Lord sees everything. The Lord is aware of everything. The Lord is in control of everything. Trust Him. Be happy. Be strong. Don't give in. and Don't give up to whatever temptations are coming. And even if you fall, say, no matter how many times I fall, the Lord will put me back on my feet. The Lord will put me back on my feet.
You know when St. Paul says, we are the church, and the church is the body of Christ, and Christ is the head. Imagine when you're feeling down, when, you, when you're at your lowest moment, you're drowning, you've hit rock bottom, there is no way out of this situation, it's miserable. Satan will come exactly at this time, when you are really losing hope and losing everything. He will come at this time and he'll put every negative thing in your head. Look at you, where is Jesus? But he doesn't tell you it's him. By the way, these kind of thoughts, Satan is an expert. When you hear a voice in your head saying, Jesus doesn't love you anymore. Look what he's doing to you. Look what's happening Look, you've been begging him. You've been going to church and praying and doing. And look, he is playing with you. He's deserted you. He's let you down. He has failed you. This is Satan, 100%. I know. Trust me. The beard is white, right? I know, it's Satan. You know what you say? You say to Satan... And another advice, don't engage yourself in a conversation with Satan a lot. Don't. Don't give him this opportunity. Don't. He talks to you, you talk to the Lord. Don't talk back to him. Because he'll grab you. I've tried it. <laughs> you talk, he talks to you, you talk to the Lord. He comes and says, then and then and Say, Lord, I love you. Smack him. When you ignore Satan, he boils up. He hates it. So get on his, on his nerves. Yeah. Why do you want to try to get on my nerves? Man, I'm a weak instrument. What do you want from me? I'm the greatest sinners of all. I'm nothing. So if you've got a problem, talk to my master. Bring the Lord. Don't be Mr. Superman and say, Hey, Satan, come here. I'm going to show you who is the man here. No, no. He'll, he'll make you a football and he'll shoot you everywhere. Believe me, grab the Lord and say, Lord, you talk to him. And then the Lord will go, boo, boo. Yeah, I had a visit the other day. <sighs> Why would I come and yell and lose my voice? If Jesus was not real, why would I waste my time and your time? Do you think this is just a, like a, a duty, an obligation? No. The church is not a duty. This kind of gathering is not a duty. It's not an obligation. This is life. I'm here because Christ is my life. Otherwise, no one will see me. I don't give one penny about this or that. This cloth and that chair is beautiful because of Jesus. Otherwise, without Jesus, just a chair. Who gives one penny about the chair? Otherwise, this is just clothes. Anyone can make them and very cheap. You go to Cabramata, very cheap. But what makes these beautiful and precious is this gorgeous man called Jesus of Nazareth. That's why I'm wearing him wherever I go. Thank you for the red belt in karate, Lord Jesus. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. When you're drowning, and when your entire body is submerged underwater, and Satan comes and makes fun of you and me, says, look at you, you're dead, you're finished. Say, no, as long as the head is above water, I'm alive. Let the whole body be underwater submerged. I'm not dead, I haven't drowned. The head is above water, I can breathe because I can receive oxygen through the head, not the body. That's the source of my life, the head. This is where I receive my breath of life. Well, guess what, Satan? The head of this body is Christ. The church, 
us is the body of Christ. Christ is the head. When your head is Christ, where is this head? Went up to heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father in the Holy of Holies, the ultimate sovereign authority, the Son of God, the Son of Man, equal to God. This is my head. He is in the heaven of all heavens. Satan, can you bring the head of Christ underwater? If you can, then I'm dead. But if you can't, I'm going to step on you in the name of the one who is my head, Christ the King. For as long as he lives, I live. Let the body be persecuted. Let the body go through trouble sometimes. Let the body suffer. But the head is Christ. This is the, my source where I receive the breath of life. I'm not dead. So away with you, Satan. Christ is my oxygen, is my life. My head is in the heaven of all heavens. You can't go any higher than this. You can't be any more glorious than this. This is where Christ has taken us, my beloveds. Love the Lord and enjoy the moment with the Lord. Read the Holy Bible. Make your homes churches or a church. Please, I beg you. If there is any silly photos of people and this and that, rip them apart. Shred them, throw them away. Clean the environment. Clean the atmosphere. Clean the house. Put a place where you kneel. Kneel, let your knees hit the ground and worship Jesus Christ of Nazareth and see what the Lord is going to do for you. God bless you always. The Lord is good. He loves us all. And He cares about us all. So whatever you were thinking of, I pray the Lord has answered you. Love the Lord, my beloveds. Please drop in your comments and questions. Please like and subscribe.